Hello, welcome, welcome. Um, okay, I'm sorry, I'm running a little bit behind today, 10 minutes. Um, I got everything prepped and ready to go, and I realized I hadn't gotten myself ready. I was in PJs and a top knot, and anyway, you guys get it. Um, so, uh, I'm quickly just making sure that I have all the comments set up. So, today we're making one of my favorites, uh, my a cheesecake. <laughs> I make a lot of cheesecakes. I have a lot of cheesecake recipes. Um, you guys have been asking for cheesecake for a while, and when I offered a couple different recipes, this one seemed to be the one that was the most requested, and so that is what we're going with, a lemon meringue pie cheesecake. So I went to Paris a couple years ago, three, almost three years ago, when my kids were um, with their dad for spring break, so I, um, I had time. Sorry, there it is. Make sure I have the comments open. Ralph, hello. All right, I'm trying to get comments open on YouTube as well, so be patient with me. I can't see those yet, but I will catch up. Anyway, I took my Paris to I my, took my mom to Paris with me for a week, and I found a cooking school there. And in the mornings, we went to cooking classes. In the afternoons, we explored Paris. So one of the um, one of the restaurants as we would explore was this beautiful little bakery that had this lemon meringue pie cheesecake. Now, my mom and I both love cheesecake. We both love lemon, so we figured we had to try this, and it was amazing. It was a lemon cheesecake with a ribbon of lemon curd in the middle, along with lemon curd on top, and then meringue on top of the whole thing, toasted. But their meringue was not the typical... I don't typically like traditional meringues. They're a little too just flavorless for me. So I like a seven minute meringue or American meringue. Um, it's the one that I use as marshmallow frosting, sometimes marshmallow fluff. It's, a, it takes seven minutes to make. It's amazing. And on top of their lemon meringue pie cheesecake, their meringue was more like this. It's a little bit thicker. It's a little bit richer. It has more of a marshmallow -y flavor to it. Anyway, so that is what I went with. So we are going to make a couple different components today. We're going to make homemade lemon curd, then we're going to make the cheesecake, and then we're going to make, oh, crust, cheesecake, topping. So we have four different recipes we are making today, and for some reason I cannot get um, YouTube to open on my old laptop so I can read the comments. So uh, anyway, we will just get started, and I will keep working on that. Hopefully I will be able to catch up. Um, Ralph... Uh, Gamal, Margaret, hello, hello, uh, Tina, yay, cheesecake, excited Grace Davis, uh, my, yes, extensions, I didn't just grow my hair by eight inches magically, um, you can do it without the meringue, you can totally leave the meringue off, but this, like I said, I don't like typical meringue, but this I love, this I could eat plain by the spoonful, um, long hair, yes, 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 uh, Debbie, from Indiana. Hello, hello. Okay. Looks like I'm finally getting um, this torque. Okay, so for lemon uh, lemon curd, uh, we're going to start with... Here's something I found oh. on the web. Alexa, stop. To I don't know why she turned on. Let's turn her volume off just in case. Okay. Um... We're going to start with a saucepan, and we're going to start with the zest of three to four lemons, depending on your lemon size. You want this to be about um, two tablespoons. And then we're going to take some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Never jarred lemon juice for something like this. Always freshly squeezed. And again, uh, about four about four lemons, about half a cup of lemon juice. So depending on your lemon size will depend on how many lemons you need to use, three to four. Um, what was I getting? Let's turn this on. And we want to heat this up a little bit. So let's talk lemon zesters. So I have, hold on. I have a couple different lemon zesters. There we go. Sorry, this is the cleaning rack. So there's a tool like this, right, that has 
the little holes along here and then like a bigger one over here or sometimes it's on the side. This big section right here is to get big, huge, thick curls. These little five right here, these are to get uh, longer, thicker curls, but neither of them are gonna be really fine. So I like using a zester like this for super fine zest for something like this, because we're gonna leave the zest in here. And this one that I love comes with a little container on the back side, so as you zest all the lemons, it holds that filling in there. Now, if you want to use this one for like some decorative zest on top, then that's the way to go. But I don't love how thick this zest is for something like this, unless you're going to um, grind it up. Anyway, when you heat up citrus, you actually lose the strength of, uh, like the citrus flavor gets weaker. Uh, so, but for lemon curd, there's not really another liquid that we can use to cook with the eggs and sugar. So you just don't, you wanna watch this carefully. And the second it looks like it's about to start boiling, you wanna move on to the next step. We don't wanna overcook this because we'll lose a lot of that great flavor that we want. Hold on, I'm finally getting YouTube to work on my other laptop so I can catch up on comments over there. Um, anyway, I'm so sorry that I have been absent for so long. I took off those two weeks over Christmas, Christmas break, and then during that week, during those two weeks, my kids were running around my studio, aka my kitchen, and they um, uh, knocked over my stand right here that holds my laptop that I control all the cameras by, and they broke it. And so I have been unable to live stream. Anyway, I finally got everything repaired, replaced, fixed, um, and we're ready to go. So in the meantime, while this, while we are heating up the lemon juice and the lemon zest, sorry, I'm gonna move that over a little bit. I'm going to uh, stir up, so this is three eggs and three egg yolks. Now make sure that you keep the egg whites because we're gonna use it for the meringue later in this recipe. And sugar. And we're going to whisk this up. Until it's completely incorporated and it's starting to get ribbony and the color is getting lower. Uh, Lindsay, hello from Lincoln, California. Oh, welcome, welcome. I hope, let me know if you try the recipes, what you think. All right, now this should not take a choppy voice. Ah, uh, no. That's funny, because over on my side of things, it says that the stream is working great. Uh, okay, hold on. I will try a couple things. I'll be right back. Okay, did that help the sound at all? Is the sound any better? All right, Facebook, how about you? Are you guys getting too much sound, too little sound? Let me know. I might need to replace something, but if only one of them is sounding bad, then obviously it's not the same thing. Okay. So this is heat, heat, all heated up. So we're going to pour it in a thin stream into our eggs and sugar mixture, stirring the entire time so that we don't cook the eggs and like get a hot spot on the eggs and get scrambled eggs instead of a custard. 
get that in completely incorporated. And that, what that does is it heats up our eggs. We're gonna pour this back into the saucepan and we're going to keep stirring. And we're gonna heat this until it hits uh, like 160 to 170 uh, with just before, like maybe a bubble or two. We don't want it to boil again because then the flavor will start to weaken. Uh, so, but we do want to get it up to that heat where it's gonna, 160 is the temperature you want to get so that they're safe. Um, and, but usually I take it to like 165, 170 so it starts to thicken properly. washing the bowl so that it's ready to go again. All right, it sounds like Facebook it, audio is clear, but YouTube audio is worse. Great. Well, it sounds like it's not the equipment then. If it's working on Facebook, so it's something on YouTube's end, and there's not a lot I can do about it. Um, so, if you're on YouTube, you can go ahead and head over to Facebook, I guess, um, or hope that the sound clears itself up. All right, and this shouldn't take very long at all because it was already so warm. It should only take a minute or two. All right, we're already at 160, so this should just be... And the reason that you want to keep stirring is so that we don't get anything burnt to the bottom. And I cook this around medium, medium high. You also don't want it to cook too fast. If you cook it all the way on high, uh, you'll probably get some burning. All right, so you can see this is thickened up quite a bit already. And we are there, we're at 170. So you can see a couple bubbles. Oh. Get off the heat right away. Woo. And we're going to immediately pour it into another bowl so that it can start cooling down. I'm going to get a spatula to scrape off all the goodness that I can. pastry cream which starts the same way liquid egg sugar um, typically I strain it to get any of the cooked egg out but if you strain this you're also going to get a lot of the lemon zest where it, which is a lot of the flavor out as well so it's up to you if while you're cooking it you feel like a lot of the egg got little cooked egg chunks in it you might want to go ahead and strain it if you feel like um, it's not a concern, then I wouldn't bother because you don't want to lose that extra flavor from the zest. Okay, we are now going to add some cold butter to this. Uh, Grace, there's a link to the recipe on my blog that has the amounts of all the ingredients. right you want it to be stirred in so cold butter it will um, it will melt more slowly and we won't get those little pools of butter now you can just 
do it like this. Refrigerate it until it's cool and then serve it. I like to add a little cream to it, but by adding the cream, it won't be quite as vibrant. The final will be just a little bit more pastel. We also want to add a pinch of salt to that as well. All right, so this is ready to chill in the fridge. You can make this ahead of time so you're not doing quite as much uh, the day that you're actually filming the recipe. But we do want it to completely chill before we use it in the cheesecake. So you want to take a pl some plastic wrap and you want to, you don't just want to cover the top of the bowl like this because you'll get a skin on the curd. You want to press it right down so that the plastic wrap is touching the top so that you don't get a film on top of your curd. Because you don't, if you do get a film anywhere, you want to make sure that you scrape it off before you use it. You don't want to re-stir any of the film into this. Okay, now we're going to put it in the fridge. Now we're going to make the crust. So this is a lemon cookie that I've ground up. Now there's a lot of different lemon cookies out there. I use like some small lemon crispy cookies that I got at Costco or Trader Joe's. Um, but you could also even use uh, lemon Oreos. But the ratio of the butter will be a little bit different because of the cream filling of the Oreos. Um, so I just use my food processor to, uh, to grind it up so they were nice fine crumbs. You can of course just use graham crackers, maybe with some lemon zest, but um, I like the lemon cookies. I feel like it gives the overall recipe this little oomph. All right, so we're gonna add some sugar to this. Now you can do this in your food processor, right? Just add the sugar directly to um, directly to the cookies right in your food processor. But I needed my food processor for another part of this recipe later, so I had to pull it out. I mean, I've melted six tablespoons of butter. I'm actually gonna start with about two thirds of it, just about four tablespoons, and see how that goes. Kind of depending on what cookie you use will depend on how much the butter you need to add. We want this to hold the crust together, but we don't want it to be extra liquidy or else you'll get butter leaking out of your pan. Because a springform pan, of course, because it's two pieces hooked together, if your crust is overly wet, you'll get some of that while it's baking in the oven, leaking out and melting through and causing a mess in your oven. So yeah, we want this to come together. You don't want any dry chunks left in your crust, but you don't, um, you don't want it overly wet. So I think four tablespoons is gonna be enough. So what you want is for it to hold itself together when you press it up the side and not be too crumbly. So as long as it's doing that, then you're good. If when you try to press it against the side, it just keeps crumbling down and doesn't hold its shape, then you're gonna wanna add a little bit more of the butter. All right, so springform pan. I like to spray the sides with a nonstick spray rather than using parchment paper on the sides. And then um, a parchment paper circle on the bottom to fit the pan. So now this is a nine inch pan, but it's technically actually more like eight and three quarters inch. So I did have to cut my nine inch cake circle down a little bit. I just bought this pan with a set of three and they said they were like 
eight, nine, and ten, but they're actually like seven and three quarters, eight and three quarters, and nine and three quarters. So when a recipe calls for a nine inch pan, I'm never sure quite which one to go for, but I didn't do the eight and three quarters. All right. So first thing I do is kind of start just moving bits of the crust over to the side. Spread the rest around the center. I just want my sides to be as even as possible. And then I like to use a measuring cup that has a nice square bottom to press everything in place. And I start in the center And then I push along the sides like this. And then I go back, making sure the center is nice and flat. ever going to be perfectly even. That's okay with me. If you really want yours to be the same height all the way around, sometimes I'll use the handle of my measuring cup and uh, do it across the top to kind of take down anywhere where it might not be the same height. Um, but I find that that tends to make more of a mess. So now what we're going to do is actually um, bake this for eight to 10 minutes at 375. Alexa, set timer for eight minutes. Eight minutes. Eight minutes. Let's get some stuff out of the way. Wipe down the work surface. the filling. So um, the thing I get asked the most about when it comes to cheesecakes, of course, is uh, the cheesecake cracking, how to avoid a cheesecake cracking. And there's a couple different uh, things that I feel really help the most when it comes to avoiding cheesecake cracking. One is room temperature ingredients. Make sure that you don't just pull out your cheesecake and use your microwave to try to soften them. You want to make sure that the cheese, the che uh, cream, cream cheesecake, the cream cheese has been out long enough that it's totally soft and your beaters are just going to go right through it. Um, all right, sorry. Making sure. So I, I got my cream cheese out um, this morning after I got back from dropping my kids off at school. And so it is, it's totally soft, right? Soft enough that it's gonna be kind of messy for me to hold this, so. Now, there we go. And then you wanna beat it. side scrapers. Don't forget to come in here and scrape the bottom because you might get some of your cream cheese kind of stuck down there. And even if it's smooth now, once you start adding your other ingredients, you might still get chunks of cream cheese if you don't really, really, really scrape. All right, next up, um, we have our sugar. Now, typically, I would just add normal sugar to this, but I want to get my sugar and my zest mixed together really well. It will help keep the zest, and this is fresh zest, it will help keep the zest from um, getting 
getting like little clumps. If you pour the sugar in and incorporate it and then pour the zest in and incorporate it. Sorry, there's a lot of plugs over here. Um, you might get a little chunk of zest where it's kind of stuck together. Also, I want to make the zest even finer so there's no like little chunks of zest in here. So by using my food processor. the zest and the sugar together, I'm going to have a better final outcome. Now, it's a step that you can ignore if you want, though. If you don't have a nice little compact, easy to use um, food processor attachment, go ahead and just add the sugar and add the zest. I would put them in a bowl and kind of use your hands to at least mix them together. It just helps break up the zest. The zest tends to be a little bit wet and tends to stick to itself a little bit otherwise. All right. So I'm gonna take, let's see if you guys can see. So you can see the sugar is a little bit more yellow now from where it's been mixed in with the zest. the bottom so that I don't get any um, any cream cheese chunks because every single thing that we add to this makes it softer and more I hate to use the word watery obviously because it's not watery but it is becoming less thick all right all right now we're gonna add two tablespoons of lemon juice So I'm adding liquid because I don't want it to splatter everywhere. Now, a lot of people say that you shouldn't overbeat cheesecake batter, and there is truth to that, but it's not until you add the eggs. So at this stage, go ahead and uh, beat it as long as you're getting it nice and smooth. Making sure I'm not getting any chunks again on the bottom. All right, and then once you add the eggs, that is when you want to be more careful. Now this uh, mixer is really, really strong motor, so I want to make sure that I'm really careful with this. If um, if you have troubles with your mixer being too strong, then um, I recommend just hand hand mixing in the eggs. Hold on, I found a couple of chunks, so I'm gonna beat it one more time. All right, so this is two eggs and one egg yolk, and again, save that egg white. So we have three egg whites from the curd, and one egg white from the cheesecake, and that's gonna leave us with four egg whites, which is exactly what we need for the meringue later. So one of the things that you can do to help so you don't have to overmix the batter is to actually, before you add your eggs to your mixture, break them up a little bit. Not to the point that they're getting foamy, right? We're not trying to beat them up, beat a lot of air into them. We're just trying to break it up so that it will break up in the um, batter more easily. Now, some people add one egg at a time, um, but I pre-mix it and then I add them all together so that I'm not over-mixing 
all of the eggs. If you start with one, then add one, then add one, then add one, that first one obviously is having a lot more beeping time. So instead of just turning it on and running it, I'm gonna pulse it. Alexa, stop. A little bit of scraping. As soon as I don't see any egg yolk ribbons or egg white ribbons, I'm going to stop. So I would say overbeating the eggs is probably, I mean, there's a lot of factors that can come into play with a cheesecake cracking, but I would say overbeating the eggs tends to be the one that people overlook the most. A lot of people are familiar with not, um, with having all your ingredients at room temperature, so that is not really something that people consider. starting to get a nice golden coloring along the top. But sometimes these crumb crusts can actually kind of um, bubble a little. So when it comes right, as soon as it comes out of the oven, I'll come back in here with my nice squared off measuring cup and just kind of press against anywhere where it's kind of grown or buckled a little bit just to keep those edges nice there we go okay Oop, this is hot now i've opened my oven door open it. i've left my oven door open a crack so it can cool down a little bit faster because you don't want to cook cheesecake at 350. cheesecake is one of those low and slow uh, recipes anything over 300 is also going to cause your, rest, your cheesecake crack because it's going to cook too quickly. So uh, let your oven cool for a while, and then we're going to set it to 300 degrees. Uh, so the next tip that I have for not getting your cheesecake to crack uh, is something that I actually used to be against, and that is water baths. I used to hate water baths because I would wrap my springform pan in heavy-duty foil, just like they say to do, and I'd put it in another pan, add water to the outside, right? And then it would leak and I would have a soggy crust and I would be so frustrated that I put all that work into dessert with a soggy crust. So I've actually found this and bought it. Uh, go to perfectcheesecakebakeware.com to order one. They used to be on Amazon. They're not anymore. I mean, they're still there. They're just not selling them there anymore, but they are selling them at perfectcheesecakebakeware.com. And I have loved this. Uh, another thing that somebody recommended to me that I try and worked okay was to use a slow cooker liner, those Reynolds plastic bag liners, and to wrap that around your pan um, and like use a string or rubber band or tape or something to help hold it into place. Um, the problem with that is you have to wait till your, uh, your crust is completely cool to wrap a plastic bag around it uh, and then put it in the oven. But it does, it does work. Um, but this is just so easy. Um, you do have to be careful. It doesn't fit all pan sizes. Luckily, it fits my pan perfectly. So it says it's nine inches from here to here, but my nine inch pan fits perfectly and it's just a little shy of nine inches. Um, anyway, uh, so what you do, what the reason for doing a water bath is that by having water on the outside, it keeps your outer cake cooler because that water takes a while to heat. And then instead of the outside cooking quickly and the inside still being raw as the heat works its way inside, the water keeps the outside cooler and then the whole thing cook, the center and the outside cook more evenly. So what I used to do is I would just bake it without a water bath 
and then the outside like half inch of my cheesecake was always overcooked and the inside was perfect and as I would eat it I just wouldn't eat that outside half inch not a big deal it's worth it to not have the center overcooked I would always rather have a slightly undercooked cheesecake than an overcooked cheesecake um, but it was just such a waste of that outer half inch and now I don't have that waste but all right so I'm going to whoo, it's hot. All right, so see how perfectly that fits in? I'm going to really quickly. Okay, you guys, I broke down and I bought real vanilla again. The prices have gone down a little bit. They're still not to where I would like them, but they have gone down a little bit. So, I, yeah, I buckled. All right, so two teaspoons and... The other thing that I don't do is I don't overly scrape my beaters, pulling them out, right? Like look at all this right here and all this up here. This tends to be where I'll get some chunks on accident and I don't want to remix those into my batter. So. Quickly stir in this vanilla. So the reason the eggs are a problem is as you beat eggs, eggs hold air so by just using a spatula to stir in some pre-beaten eggs or to stir this vanilla in i'm not going to cause problems the way i would if i was over beating this all right i'm going to pour this into the crust and i'm only going to pour about half in to begin with Spread it around. Now here is some lemon curd that I made yesterday so we'd have some cooled lemon curd to work with. So as you can see, it's much thicker than it was before it was cooled. And I'm going to plop some, about a third of the lemon curd over my batter. And I'm trying to keep it from getting too thick. I'm going to take a knife and kind of swirl this. Kind of break up that curd. Make sure not to touch the bottom of your crust. We don't want to um, break the crust up into our mixture. Oh man, that tastes so good. Sorry, I had to lick the knife. I'm trying to kind of evenly cover that curd with the rest of my cheesecake batter. Rather than just plop it all in the middle, if you just poured it all in the middle, it would actually push that curd layer to the outside. Should have grabbed my bigger spatula. This is kind of a mess. <laughs> okay. All right, and then again, I don't want to have break that crust up so I'm trying to touch that batter to the pan. If I bring it over and then I pull it back it's actually going to pull the crust, break the crust up a little bit and pour it away so I don't want to do that. And carefully there. And then once I have it touching the sides I can kind of 
spread it a little bit more smoothly. Oh my word, that tastes so good. Okay. So now, I have this 12 inch cake pan that I like to use and I'm going to fill it with water until it's about halfway up. A little bit more than halfway, but I don't want it to be taller than the cheesecake batter. Then, because if the water gets taller than where the cheesecake batter is, you know, we'll get some bubbles, hold on. Sorry, new knife, clean knife. I'm gonna swirl again. Again, not going low enough to scrape the crust. But what this does is it will help incorporate that lemon curd a little bit and it will help pop some of these bubbles. Alexa, set timer for one hour. All right, I'm going to take that lemon curd that I have left and put it, cover it again, put it back in the fridge. to cheesecake cracking is over baking their cheesecake. Now it'll take a little bit of trial and error with your oven because everybody's oven cooks a little differently. I recommend having an oven thermometer. It's a little thermometer that stays in your oven so that as so you don't just blindly set your oven temperature and hope that it's right. My oven tends to be anywhere between 15 and 10 degrees off at any given time. Um, when I first got it it's now mellowed there's hot spots, there's cool spots. Knowing your oven will help you be a better baker, knowing the temperature of your oven. Um, but I'm a thermometer nut. I have a fridge thermometer, a freezer thermometer, an oven thermometer, a meat thermometer, a candy thermometer, and then an instant read thermometer. And I use them all constantly. Um, so uh, because this is only two pounds of cream cheese, I'm only gonna cook it for an hour. If I was doing three pounds of cheese of cream cheese, I would do about an hour and 15 minutes. I can't really, without, I already had to make two cheesecakes for this because of course I have a finished one that we're gonna add the meringue topping to and then I'm gonna slice and show you. Um, so I already had to make two. And let's face it, cheesecakes are rich desserts and they're hard to finish with just a family of five. And I didn't wanna make a third one that came out of the oven like right now to show you. So all I can really compare it to is when you go to check your, and don't, check your cheesecake constantly. Every time you open your oven, you're gonna cause problems that can lead to cracking. So, trust a recipe, make sure your oven is the right temperature and then trust whatever recipe it is you're using. If you're making, if your oven is, runs too hot, you can set it at 290. As long as it hits 300, that's the, that's the part that you're looking for, right? Always err on being too cold over being too hot. Uh, so, when the hour is up, and I go and I open the door 
I'm going to give the cheesecake pan a little jiggle, just a little boom, boom, boom. And the whole thing should kind of go like a waterbed-ish. If it's too watery, right, it needs a little bit more time. Um, you want it to almost be as if it was filled with jello jigglers, right? Not normal jello. Normal jello is a little bit more firm, but jello jigglers is a little bit more wobbly, right? So you want, out of a nine inch cheesecake, you want that center six inches to still be movable. The outside can be firm, that's fine. Although, again, I prefer my cheesecakes creamy versus chunky's the wrong word. When you over bake a cheesecake, the texture just tends to be a little bit more, it's not grainy, it's not chunky. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, that mouth feel. Anyways, I overbake cheesecake, which I feel like most people tend to do to me is just not as appealing. Now you don't want the center to be liquid, but you do want it to be creamy. Now, as once the temperature goes off and I check it and I make sure it still has a nice little overall jiggle, especially if you're using a water bath, the whole thing will have a little bit of a jiggle to it. Center more so, outside a little less so. If you're not using a water bath, just the center will have the jiggle. The outside should, will be firm. Um, and then we're going to crack open the door of the oven and leave it there for 30 minutes to an hour until it is cool to room temperature. Turn off the oven, crack it open. Um, so then that continues to cook and that also helps prevent cracking. If you go straight from the hot oven to your cold counter and let it cool there, you will probably get cracks because of that quick change in temperature. So it will not be ready to go the second that hour is up. That extra half hour, hour that it's cooling in that warm oven as it all cools down together, it's continuing to cook. And then because it's a custard-based dessert, we're gonna stick it in the fridge and we're gonna leave it overnight. And that is where uh, it sets completely. You cannot serve a cheesecake right away. It is best after 24 hours, in my opinion. Um, so when this comes out of the oven, uh, and it is cooled, so oven's done, and it's cooled, that's when I add the rest of the lemon curd. Um, I did a nice thick layer all along the top um, before I put it in the fridge. I don't want to add it when the cheesecake is totally hot, because that will cause the lemon curd to melt and I don't want that I want it to stay so as soon as the cheesecake is done cooling in the oven after that half hour hour I'm going to spread the lemon curd on top I'm going to stick it in the fridge for a day now this is day two we're going to make the meringue topping okay so hopefully that all made sense also if you go over to the blog post at ashlynmarie.com I have all of these tips for cheesecake written out. I also have instructions for converting it from an oven to an instant pot if you prefer that method as well. All right, so the seven minute meringue topping. We're actually going to be using a, um, a double boiler. So I have a pan that I have an inch, inch and a half of water in. Then I have a bowl. Now typically I don't use silver bowls when I'm filming because the reflection but I've lost way too many glass bowls doing this. Um, glass bowls, when I, I'm putting the bowl up, so I put the pan down, put the bowl on top. This is kind of act as a lid and it's going to help um, that water boil faster. When I use a glass pan, the second I add the cold egg whites, it cracks the pan. So one, don't use cold egg whites. Once I crack the eggs for this recipe, you can actually leave your egg whites out on the counter. Um, I would refrigerate them overnight and just pull them out. You can do them cold as long as you're not using a glass pan. It's not going to make a huge difference. But you can leave your egg whites out as long as they are covered. All right, so we have... Um, yes, the recipe page. The recipe has been on my site for years. It is already there. Um, Martha, it looks absolutely divine already. It really is so good. This is There's a lot of recipes that I've made enough times that I don't lick my fingers as I cook because I'm just kind of sick of it, like buttercream. 
Uh, this is one where I've, I've already used like five spatulas and three knives because I keep licking them and I have to get a fresh one out. Okay, so we're uh, typically I would let this boil before I start adding, adding everything else, but we're just going to move ahead. So sugar, oops, wrong camera. Sugar and egg whites and uh, corn syrup. So I tend to get asked about corn syrup a lot. If you have been watching me for very long, you have heard my corn syrup um, rant. So when uh, you hear in the news that high fructose corn syrup is bad for you, it is. But it is not the same thing. High fructose corn syrup is not the same thing as the corn syrup you buy at the grocery store to use in recipes. This corn syrup is not high fructose and it doesn't have the same negative connotations, but people just tend to think corn syrup, bad, and leave it as that. So the reason I recommend using corn syrup um, is it helps keep it from being grainy. Corn syrup actually helps, sorry, I'm gonna get a whisk. As the sugar melts and cooks into the eggs, the corn syrup uh, helps keep the sugar from being grainy um, or going back to grainy once it's melted. So I, I really highly recommend using corn syrup in any candy making, and meringue is a candy, any candy making recipe. Also, it helps give it, it helps it hold better body. So we're gonna get a fluffier, lighter meringue. It gives it some shine when you're dealing with things like caramels more of a big deal than meringue um, and uh, and it gives it better strength like overall structure than just using sugar and egg whites so that's my that's my spiel that's why I recommend corn syrup if you don't live in the USA uh, I believe golden syrup is uh, similar and it is what I would recommend using is actually a two-part recipe. So I'm just, as this heats up, I don't want the egg to cook, so I'm just making sure I'm continuing to stir it until that water starts boiling. Um, there's two parts to this meringue. There's the part where we are going to be beating it over boiling water while this pan gets nice and hot, and that cooks our eggs to a safe temperature, and the heat helps the sugar melt, and it helps the, uh, it helps the whole thing um, hold better than just beating egg whites by themselves, right? Because it's cooking the egg whites. So then once they're firm, they're going to stay that way. If you just beat egg whites by themselves, they're eventually going to deflate. But by cooking the sugar into the egg whites and heating the egg whites to a safe temperature to eat, um, it will hold afterwards. It's not going to melt. Um, so we're going to meet up to the beat up to a safe temperature. It takes about four minutes typically if the water's already boiling. Uh, and then we're going to take it off the heat so it can start to cool down. And again, we need it, the heat to cook the sugar, to cook the egg whites, to help it hold structure, but we need it to cool down to get to that final uh, stiff peaks. Uh, beating it over the hot is not going to help you get there. So four minutes, overheat, and we're going to put it in a different bowl. You don't just want to take it off the heat and keep beating in this. You want to actually put the mixture in a different bowl so it can cool down faster. And then we're going to beat it to stiff peaks and that should take another three minutes. Vanilla, like lemon juice, like I talked about earlier in this video, if you add any extracts to something while you're heating it, the alcohol that holds the extract together evaporates and you actually lose some of the strength of the flavor. So I'm not going to add the vanilla until after I've poured it in, into another container and beat it that way. All right, we are almost at boiling. So I'm going to switch over to the hand mix, the hand, hand mixer. Um, it is going to be loud. I apologize.
look how white and thick it's already getting. My new hand mixer that has these double whisks is actually going a lot faster. Usually it takes a lot longer to get to this point. So I'm going to grab my quick three thermometer really fast. Sorry, I'm trying not to make a mess with the beaters. You don't burn yourself as you pull that off. Obviously, you can just pour this into a normal bowl um, and continue to use your uh, your hand mixer. I just, this way I won't have to, I kind of put it off screen. I can continue to talk to you guys. All right. Add our vanilla. This is an attachment for my Bosch mixer. So I'm going to just put it over here on that.
are. All right, so it's still kind of soft peaks, but this is, I'm happy with this. So I'm going to move on. You might use my long hair. So good. Okay, so we have, you can see the crust and the cheesecake and the layer of lemon curd. This has been in the refrigerator since yesterday. I have, now there's a couple different ways. You can just plop this meringue on top and use your spatula to make little peaks. Um, I like piping. I feel like it gives it more fancy finished and it doesn't take very much. And we're gonna torch it. And so by piping it, you'll get those little lines from the piping from the star, right? But you do not have to use a piping bag and tip. You 100% can just plop it on and use the back of your spatula or a spoon to give yourself nice waves. This is just me being extra. I got these new piping bags and I hate them, so I'm trying to get rid of them. They are not a good brand. I really like the Fat daddy um, piping bags. I think they're really good. <laughs> Plus, they're really small. I usually order bigger ones. I don't know why. I just, it was an accident to order such small piping bags. Oop. And you can decide how far to the edge you want to go with your meringue. Right? You can leave more lemon curd or less lemon curd showing, kind of depending on your goal. All right, these little piping bags, gotta refill again. Uh, Sunshine Baker, thank you so much. Oh, it sounds like the sound is working on YouTube now. You guys, I seriously, if it's working on Facebook and not YouTube, it's all the same equipment, so it's not the equipment's problem. So it must be something to do with the streaming, but the streaming on my end says that it's streaming well, so I wonder if the sound was something to do on YouTube's end. Um, I will do some research and see if I can figure out, because this is not the first time we've had some audio problems, so I will work on it. So just kind of have fun with this. Let's see how shiny and glorious and rich this looks. That's the corn syrup. Oh, so good. So for those of you who are new to the channel, I have, I actually have had short, like pixie length hair for years. The last time I had my hair this long was when I was 17. So that's been a while. Anyway, so I started growing my hair out two years ago and it has been a huge pain in my patootie and I have hated every second of it, but it finally got long enough that I was able to get extensions. So that is, was my Christmas present to myself. All right, so you can stop here, but I kind of like to come in here and add some more peaks. Kitchen torch. You guys have a kitchen torch you recommend? 
this one, even though I keep refilling it, keeps giving me problems. So I think it's time to get a new one. Come on. It's like the great. The flame's not working. I know the gas is filled. <laughs> you guys. All right. Now this will, this will kind of make your meringue, oops, great, I blew out the, I don't want to kind of get this one. using my barbecue. There we go. To light that. And it'll make your meringue grow a little bit. If you catch one of the tips on fire, make sure not to blow it out near your torch. It'll light your, blow out your torch too. And you'll notice the shine goes away. So you do not have to torch yours if you don't want to. You can see what I'm talking about with the lines because I used the piping, right? So it will dull your meringue. So if you like it shiny, you do not have to do this. But the meringue will stay super, super sticky if you don't torch it. By torching it, and take, you'll take away the shine, but you'll also take away the stickiness. So personal choice. I love, by using the piping tip, I love all these great lines. I feel like it just really adds to the look of this. I think it's time for me to get a bigger kitchen torch just to go faster. And you can torch this as much or as little as you want, right? I want to get mine just a little bit darker for aesthetic reasons. like it looks more defined. The more you torch. Alright. We're gonna call that good. Ba -ba -ba! This part got a little dark. I'm just gonna take that off. There we go. Da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. And it is finished. Now, something else I will mention, I didn't get that top very centered. Oh, well, something else um, I'm going to mention is uh, this, the inside of this is still sticky. And so as you cut, it will, um, it will stick to your knife. So I clean my knife in between and I get my, my knife nice and warm before I cut. That helps. Uh, the other thing is where the meringue and the lemon curd are connected, it tends to get slippery and it can sometimes like slip off, especially the longer it is. So the fresher it is, the more it's going to stick together. It kind of, the sugar in the meringue reacts to the citrus and the lemon. And so it just kind of starts to get a little moist between the two. So it tends to get a little slippery the longer you have this. So if you're not going to eat this cheesecake right away, I recommend waiting to make the meringue until couple hours before you serve it, right? You can refrigerate this and it will hold its shape just fine. You can put plastic wrap on it. I would let it cool a little bit first because the peaks are still a little bit warm. Um, but yeah. All right, let's get a plate and cut this.
going to run this under warm water. Because I did the meringue so fresh, it is going to be a little bit messier than if I like had let it sit just a little bit and wash my knife off again. So you can see the meringue is still pretty soft. If I had let this sit in the fridge um, like an hour, you would see the defined lines better, right? So let's pretend I'm not doing this, but clean this a little bit. All right, so you can see, sorry about that. You can see the ribbon of lemon curd in the middle. We have our nice layer of crust. And then we have our layer of lemon curd on top, and we have our meringue layer. Da, 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 da. Does that start look any better? So see how the cheesecake is still nice and soft in the middle? Man, the meringue's kind of a mess. <laughs> this is how I like my cheesecake. More softer now. Obviously, that's lemon curd right there. Let's see if we can get a better shot from here. All right? When a cheesecake gets overcooked, it tends to get kind of... Somebody used the word dense in the comments, but that's not quite right either. It's Ooh. it's grainy without being grainy. You know when you freeze cheese and you go to slice it and it kind of is a little bit uh, fall apart and not smooth? It's a little bit more like that. It's just not, to me, a super pleasant texture. But great thing about cooking from scratch is that you can make it however you want. So if you like your cheesecake, what I would call overcooked, overcook it. Totally up to you. Anyway, best part. Mmm, -hmm. mm, so good. Mm. I haven't made this in two years. I forgot how good this cheesecake is. It is seriously so good if you live close to me I have two of these come by and get some I cannot eat it all myself anyway. let's see if you can see see that ribbon of lemon curd in the middle right and the lemon curd on top this is just this is perfect for spring too it's so bright I love citrus things they're just so bright Let's check out the texture on the back side of my cheesecake. See how that's still like squished nicely? And it's still like soft. I call this perfect. I could almost, I could, not almost, I could spread it, right? If I took this cheesecake and like took a butter knife and so I could still spread it, and that's what I call perfect, right? It's just melt in your mouth, melt in your mouth, melt in your mouth, nice and soft, still a custardy dessert. It's not so soft that it's going to fall apart. It holds, it's firm, it holds its shape, but I could spread it. I don't like spreadable cream cheese, right? Bagel cream cheese. Anyway, this would be good on a bagel. Anyway, 
this was a long video since we had four different components that we were making. I hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, sorry that I have been out of commission for so long. I am excited to get back to doing the weekly live streams. If you have any requests, don't forget to put them in the comments so that I can um, see what types of things. Uh, are you still looking for wintry, warm, comforty foods? Are we looking for cakes, desserts? Do you want some Valentine's treats? Or do you want to start getting more into spring type things? Or, okay, I'm not even going to say it. Okay, I'll say it. You can tell me if you want more healthy stuff. I'm not going to make it because that's not what I do. But it is, you know, the beginning of the year. I really should just skip January every year because then I don't have to deal with pretending that I'm trying to lose weight or eat salads. Because <laughs> this, is, this is not me. Uh, anyway, all right, I'm going to see if I missed any comments and then I will say goodbye. Um, let's see. Looks creamy and decadent. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, you need to move to New Jersey. <laughs> Uh, yes, I would love to move away, but I'm stuck here for custody issues. Uh, thank you, Big Cheesecake, eat a bite for me. Tina, I will eat more than one bite for you. You are welcome. Um, does it taste different torched or not torched? No, not really. Um, it really just affects the outside being that goopy, goopy is the wrong word, but you know, being that soft, fluffy inside, um, that you're going to get once you cut it, it makes it, it just makes it easier to handle and it's a different look. And it's typical for lemon meringue pie to cook and torch your meringue, right? So it's just, it's more about kind of bringing it back together. So no, if you do not torch it because you don't have a torch or you don't want to, it's just going to be, it's just going to stay super messy. And you're not going to want to cover it with plastic wrap because it's just going to stick to the plastic wrap. So really it's just a matter of being messy and not being messy. It's really not going to change the flavor. I mean, there is a slight torchy flavor, but nobody's ever eating like just you know, that torch tip, when you're eating it as a bite and a whole with the cheesecake, you're not going to notice it. Um, drooling on my phone, Jill. I'm buying and get some, please. Um, Grace, Elaine, just click on the link right there in the Facebook description. It'll take you over to my website. You can just jump to the recipe and click print, and it'll print everything uh, exactly how you want it. Crumbly, Sunshine Baker, that is a good word. Crumbly is a good word. Um, you have to make this two of your favorite things combined? Yes, 100%. They were gonna say Easter stuff, not healthy stuff. I do, I do do, I do, I do celebrate Easter, so I do make Easter stuff. Um, hearty soups, comfort food, yes, yes. Crumbly is perfect description of a, for what I consider an overbaked cheesecake, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, do you have the name of the Cheesecake Silmon Company on your site? No, because I just went searching for it. To, oh, it's in the oven. <laughs> I'm like, where did I put it? I just went searching for it today. I went, I check Amazon pretty regularly to see when that pan um, comes back on sale. And in one of the comments, somebody said it was supposed to come on sale January 21st. So I don't know if it just already sold out on Amazon or what. But then I looked at the bottom of the pan and it had that, the name of that company. So I'm like, well, I'll go check, check there. And on their site, they are selling it on their site. So there is that. Um, once we turn this off, I will go write it in the comments. Um, uh, you, you said it's spectacular. You love lemon. Uh, it is. Kitchen torch, big tipper mill, yes. Uh, yeah, I will probably stick with the extensions for a year. Um, just for a change. And then we'll see what I do after that. Um, okay, yay, the noise is, I will, I will do some research and see if I can figure out what's going on with the audio on YouTube. Sounds like it's not anything that I can control, so, anyway. Um, please don't advertise your own channel on my site. Uh, so yes. My mixer, it is a Bosch Universal Mixer. Uh, or did you mean my hand mixer? My big mixer is a Bosch Universal Mixer. I own two, I have three bowls. I use them for everything. They are the best home stand mixer in the world, in my opinion. Um, I have used all the brands that are out there that I can easily get or that are pretty normal. Um, my hand mixer is, I don't know. <laughs> Hold on, I will show you. I don't know how to say that. 
but I like it because it tells you how long you've been beating something, which is nice. So yeah, totally. The only thing I don't like is that it doesn't have a boost, but the reason I picked this one is two reasons. One, it has nice long beaters so that when I'm mixing in a video, it's not all you, you don't just see this, you actually can like see what I'm mixing. And it has a higher wattage. This is 400 watts. Um, if, if you live in a country where you can get the Bosch hand mixer, it is by far the best hand mixer in the world. They just don't sell them in America right now, so I had to get something else. Um, so this is a close second. Um, I've been through, when my Bosch hand mixer broke last year, sad day, need some like funeral music. It was so sad. Um, I tried five different brands of hand mixers and this is the one that I kept. So uh, anyway, all right, I think I have answered all the questions. So, uh, Overbaked cheesecake is dry. Yes, but I was looking more for it. It is dry, um, but I was looking more for it, like a texture description. Can't wait to try it. <laughs> you bought your son for this cheesecake. Luckily, being two pounds of cream cheese in a nine inch pan, like it is plenty of cheesecake. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, Tina, yes, Tina added the link to the perfect cheesecake bakeware. There you go. All right. Thanks again for joining me. Uh, don't forget if you ever share any recipes that you've made from my site online, don't forget to tag me at Ashley Marie Cakes or hashtag Make Some Awesome, and I will share the image of what you made in my Instagram stories. So I will see you guys next week. Um, yeah. Bye.